painting, the Americans are very suspicious of paintings. And it dawned on me something like that, the most extraordinary thing that one can spend a lot of time making an object which, whose only function is to be looked at. That's ridiculous. That's very un-American. In 68, Jefferson Art School died, and uh, my painting had come to a stop, and I got a call from a friend, would you like to teach out here? I didn't know how to spell Albuquerque. But anyway, uh, best move I ever made. I came from a very strange family, but uh, uh, I realized uh, we never sat down and had a conversation. You know, we, we would do things, we had activities, and we'd talk, and the dinners were marvelous, the house was very attractive, and I talked to my friends differently than I did when I was a child. So that is, is very helpful. She was the camouflage tyrant of the family. And uh, it had to be her way or nothing. And so I, 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 was, I stayed aside. I, 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 it, was, it was wonderful getting in the Army because there people were doing things that were not Hammersley way, and it worked. That really surprised me because I thought Mother's way was the way. Just get out of the house. That was my aim. And the thing we learned, never let the screen door slam because then you're asked where you're going. See? It's amazing how much things you are inside that you haven't had a chance to spill out and to have a person that you can talk to is very helpful. The conversation, I realize, is a method in which one waits, one waits until he stops talking so I can. God. Well, see this painting here? this little t teacup. My father did that when he was 75. And I've always enjoyed it. Uh, uh, so he started off small, and then he did a picture and uh, something larger. And then I have paintings where he made a uh, larger painting, and he would get in shows. And he said, now I understand what you mean by getting in a show. And when he got $25 prize, he was on top. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I've always enjoyed that little painting. My father lettered rather than write. I said, well, I can letter better than that. So uh, I ma made signs for him. And then I got a job painting in the theater. Uh, and so when I went to San Francisco, I went to some funny art school. And when Susie brought home a folio from Chouinard, I didn't get along with her too much. But when I saw the folio, I changed. So I went to Chouinard in 41. It was, it was delicious. That was the academic world, you see. The abstraction was not, didn't exist. So I, I took a photo, photographic class, so I knew how to make a print I, when I first went to uh, uh, university. When I left art school, I didn't know what to do, so I was just winging it, which was on the hammer like. This shop is where I make my frames. Uh, long ago, and, and the things, everything you see up, I've made the frame. You see this laugh here, the, 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 this here, that's taken down from the ceiling of my living room, but it was a nice uh, texture. And this is where I uh, used to paint. After I taught for three years, and uh, I put enough money aside to just work, yeah, I was very successful and being invisible for many years. Why were you invisible? Well, no one liked the paintings. Why? Oh, uh, because it was, it's very difficult, hard edge paintings. See, the people who were used to seeing a portrait of a man or a landscape, and then they give shapes, it's like they're being cheated. Oh, that was ridiculous. But I was so astonished what, you, you can put down a shape and they, are, they just lie there and then you make a movement and it comes alive. I never quite understood that, but it's marvelous. The shapes have attitudes and, and uh, the, the painting just clicks. It's just unbelievable. Uh, it's marvelous. I had a small canvas and I was going to do a portrait and I would divide it in threes. 
and I was going to start the portrait, but that shape, that would look nice if that were blue. But no, I was going to do a portrait, but I mean, but I didn't want to waste canvas. You see, I was very particular about money. But anyway, I did the whole thing, one rectangle after another, without thinking. And I burst out laughing. I said, my God, this is marvelous. So that started the hunch painting. Uh, I see a, a canvas a certain size, and I can see a shape there. I squeeze the paint on the palette knife and uh, apply the paint until I got the shape I liked. So I'd look at the shape of the canvas, and they felt good. So I'd wait until it created a brother. And then I'd put him in. And then there was no reaction, so I put it away. And so, so that taught me faith. And I would have 14 canvases leaning against the wall that I'd been working on. I rented a small room over a garage, and so one morning I'd come in and turn it around, no reaction, and I turned all 14 around, and there was no reaction, so I went home. Doing nothing is, very imp is a painting principle. If, if it doesn't come, I don't do it. I never made mistakes, never changed things. It was unbelievable. You could see some of the paintings that re are related, and then that, this one has nothing to do with anything. So I just, I leave myself open to these things. Like I inherited a lot of uh, stretcher bars. Someone asked me, why the square? Well, this friend had given me a lot of stretcher bars. He'd left art school, so I, put the canvas down to get all the, the most paintings I could get out of that canvas. And then when that was exhausted, I went to the square. Uh, there was a lumberyard I would visit their trash can, and they were throwing out some paintings, uh, like 12 inches square, 8 inches square. And I came home with these pieces of wood, and it dawned on me, after I'd seen a, a Da Vinci show, in Santa Barbara called Leonardo Visits Da Vinci, or da Vinci. And it was his contemporaries, and then this small drawing of a man with drapery. And to look at it, you'd get close. The minute I got close, I realized it was the size of my face. So there's paintings that you can comfortably hold. There's paintings the size of you, and then there's small paintings the size of your hand. That really surprised me, but it, I would have ideas and I'd project it on a blank canvas that was large, it didn't feel right. But the small painting, it clicked. Oh, I was so surprised. That, mm. was, that was wonderful. When you come in, there's my supply of small geometric paintings that I have left. Uh, see that, that painting up in the, the far, that was a hunch painting. Now see, I may, I may see a red triangle, I'd put that in, and I'd wait, another piece would come in, and until the piece after piece would come in. And you see, I didn't, I didn't want to uh, spend time mixing the colors, so I had all these colors. I had 75 more than there. And that was delicious. I just, I didn't have to do anything. The impulse was here, and I applied it a few minutes later. And that was lovely. I would paint by squeezing the color from the tube on a, on a palette knife and applying it to the paint. No drawing, no nothing. That's how that started. And then, uh, uh, one day I was going to Pomona College, I taught there for a few years, and I saw a painting in my head, and I came home and put it in a book, and then it scared me because it was only four shapes. And uh, so we both aged together until one morning I painted it. And the uh, Birth of the Blue catalog, do you know that? Mm -hmm. uh, that painting is on near the front of the book. I, all these different things, I was trying to go someplace, I don't know where it was, but until I hit it, see this one uh, I may have made because I checked it. Now if I liked it, then I'd put it here. Then we'd rest a while because I, I wanted to be sure it was right. Now after that, I had a title of things. I put the painting out, and I free associate Santa Claus, gloves, winter, cold, don't like that. I'd write these things out as it came. I was thinking of my mother who didn't like these paintings, but if I give her uh, like uh, the yin yang symbol, I made one something like that, and I called it next is now. So 
the person that would like the painting, they'd look at the title and then they would see it do the same thing in the painting. So it kind of opened their eyes and I would feel better. I heard of a painter in Israel that would do a painting a day. And I thought that was very interesting. The painter should be able to shift in any gear. So I tried that and I said, I'll try a big one. This was one of the early organic ones. It was out of my depth. I couldn't handle it. So I went to small painting. And then as I got older, uh, it stopped. I'd get ideas, but I didn't have the energy to do anything. And, but I had finished the working. I'm on IV now. I had an operation on an infected shoulder, and I'm, I'm looking forward to having that gone so, so I can feel more like Hammersley. I don't know who I feel like now, but it, it's someone else. Are you not painting now? Oh, no. You're not painting? No, not for some years. But what about, you're not doing any drawings or anything? No. None? No. None. Uh, it's like a dessert. Nothing is dessert. high school and college, you were directed to some leg legitimate occupation, like a doctor or a, a plumber or something that's tangible. It's a great pleasure in making something that rings right. When you walk outside, what do you see? With what's ever around me. People are running or walking and they're listening to music. That doesn't make sense. You're going to listen to music or you're going to run. And when you run, I mean, you're, in, you're pushing air aside, and then you see, you have a continual new vision, all these things around you. And that is very exciting. I mean, if you let yourself alone, and then you can turn around and walk, and it's a form of meditation. You just think out things. I mean, you can do anything when you walk. I'm very good at lying down. Uh, if I let myself alone, then things come, and uh, that's very helpful. Blank spaces are so important. And then I like to think, if I make something that pleases me, I like to think this, it has some relationship to anyone who looks at it. He'll see next is now, or he'll see Foxtrot. There's no people dancing, but those paintings make, me, make you think of uh, a dance. The base reason for doing a lot of those things is to shock mother. It's to shock the establishment. A freedom is individuality. Painting is gone. Pa painting is very, you very seldom see painting. We're all merchants. We're all merchants. But I'm very aware of things that are alive. I just see things that feel good and I know I'm being added to. Oddly enough, it doesn't have anything to do with your mind. The mind is helpful to pay the gas tax, pay your bills, but th this is another category. It's very, it's very, uh, I admire the poet and all these people that uh, make things. An Indian, American Indian said, everything you see comes from Mother Earth. Now that's quite extraordinary. Do you believe that? Oh, I certainly do. Oh my God, everything you see comes from the earth. Well, I see it on the canvas. And then if I put something to what I see, and that of effort in the canvas feels the same, feels good, then I can add something and it still feels good, but it's a little bit more complicated. And then I know when the last shape comes in. It's just remarkable, it's remarkable. We're all different. And then we're the same thing in a way. We, we, there's a common language we understand. If the impulse comes to do something, then I find myself doing it. So 
So that's it, right? Goodbye.